red, white, and blue. We're going to be talking about something that's as American as apple pie, but even better for you. Welcome to Help at Home, your resource for great recipes and easy learning. I'm Jim Hightower. Today I'm going to talk about my new change in eating habits and what it is. And why I've got red, white, and blue bowls. And even though this one's a slightly yellow, it's going to be white today. Work with me. <sighs> what my change in eating habits have become are... I'm now eating whole grains. And it's not just as simple as saying you're eating whole wheat bread because guess what? Whole wheat bread is a lie. If you go and pick up a loaf of bread, which I have one, and it says, honey wheat, unbleached, enriched flour. It says wheat flour. Now, let me tell you about that. In case you didn't know, I'm a retired teacher, elementary, and you're in for a lesson on wheat. Whole wheat, or red wheat, is this right here. So, red goes in the red bowl. Whoopsie! And, I'm going to lift it up here so you can see. Now, hard red wheat is your standard whole, uh, whole wheat when you think of wheat or wheat bread. These are small, hard, and somewhat brick or red colored. And if you grind this up, you get whole wheat flour. And, and more to the point, whole grain flour. Now, whole wheat flour and whole grain flour can be completely different. And if you didn't know it, I'm here to tell you. Whole wheat flour has been sifted of things like uh, the germ and the bran, where a lot of your vitamins are. And um, so they had to enrich it, as it says on the package. They had to go back after it's been ground and add vitamins back to it or uh, you would end up getting illnesses and, and get sick. I read a magazine article from 1899 from a preacher, I believe, talking about the women who were so proud of the little white loaves but not knowing that it was the white flour making everybody sick because back then it was not enriched with vitamins again after being ground and sifted because all that white flour is or all-purpose flour is your hard wheat or your hard red wheat that's been ground into flour and then sifted in very small hold sifters over and over until all of your wheat uh, bran and the wheat germ is out and when you do that it's not brown anymore it's white write that down I bet you didn't know it next I'm gonna skip this one next we have hard white wheat which is something that's relatively new on the scene uh, I don't know. 
I mean, it's been around as far as people are using it. It's just gotten popular. Now, you can see it's small, it's hard, and it's fairly wide. Now, if you've got hard red wheat, why do you need hard white wheat? Well, hard white wheat is just a tiny bit softer and it helps to lighten up your bread. People have been mixing in different kinds of flours to lighten their, their breads or, or for other purposes for thousands of years. Uh, maybe all the way back to the beginning. So, um, my bread, which I make here, let's see, take this one. I make a honey wheat bread using half hard and uh, half hard red and half hard what? And oh, it's the softest, most delicious thing you've ever tasted, and it lasts for a week or more at room temperature. But I'll talk about how to make that in another video. But so mixing the two hard grains not only gives you the benefit of the minerals and and uh, vitamins of both but this helps to soften up a little bit of this hard red. Lastly, and the top three most popular grains in America is soft white wheat. Now, slide that over and soft white wheat is very white and if you didn't notice, it's, it's a little bit more plump than your hard grains. And soft white wheat has a higher moisture content and that's why it's soft. Your hard grains have a lower moisture content. And also, soft wheat has less gluten you wouldn't want to make bread or anything out of yeast um, with your soft white wheat because this is your cake and pastry flour once you've ground it up. So there's our three main American grains. Now yes people use rye grain and they make things and, and, and people use a lot of other grains but your main ones hard red, hard white, soft white. And if you had to pick two hard red and soft white because you would get your your wheat flour and your cake and pastry flour and if you sift this you can get all the way to all purpose but it it takes a lot and you have to buy small hold sifters on Amazon or buy it at your store now I'll be honest when I make things with whole grain and freshly milled flour I feel great and some of you that might get these um, <clears throat> summer colds or other things nobody in our family's had one and we just eat you know maybe a sandwich a day or something or bread with our breakfast but when I eat something made with these I feel like I'm almost eating vegetables because I'm I'm getting the bran and the germ, all those minerals, and it just makes me feel great, and it will make you feel great. Now, I'm sure I'm going to get all kinds of questions about these, such as, how did I get started on this? Where can I get this? How much does it cost? How do you grind this? And I'll answer those questions. However, I'm going to talk about how to, how to mill or grind the wheat in a different video. Um, I'm trying to think, but a lot of people, including some of my extended family members and people outside my house, when I talk about making bread, oh, well, I want some of that, and they're all excited, but then they're like, well, do you want me to pick you up a loaf of bread? I said, no, I make my bread. Well, what about for sandwiches? Yes. I make my own bread. 
And it's good, yes, it's good for sandwiches. People act like this is some kind of magical witchy poo kind of stuff. It's just whole grain and it makes whole grain flour. It makes flour like you would go buy, except it's been sifted out to be lighter at the store. Now, um, let's talk about why would you want to grind or mill your own grain. And I'm going to do this quickly because like I said, I'm going to get into that in another video. But the reason you would want to buy your own grain, which they call wheat berries by the way, um, is when you mill your own wheat and make your own flour, you get all of those great vitamins and nutrition and the fiber right there. Now, the good and the bad part is, yes, you get it all, but within four days, you lose all of those vitamins and minerals and things. And why is that? It's because your um, inside of your wheat berries, you've got your endosperm and all that, and there's oil in there. And when that oil hits the air from the moment you've ground, uh, ground it or milled it, it starts slowly. Um, <clears throat> oh gosh, what do you call that? It starts going rancid, basically. And so, um, you've got four days before it's all gone. However, if you uh, mill your grain, or if you make flour and put it in the freezer, it'll last a month or two. If you make flour and put it in the refrigerator, it'll last about a week. But get this, if you get the flour at the grocery store, it's been sitting on the shelf who knows how long or in a warehouse somewhere maybe for months it's all gone now back to that where it says enriched yes the government requires them to go back and add or enrich um, some of the minerals that were lost when it was sifted but they don't put back hardly half of, of what was gone. So that's one important thing. One more thing that I wanted to mention that is so healthy about grinding your own grain to make flour is that you don't have to worry about the chemicals and poisons that they use when they process flour in, in, in the commercial industry. You know for you to buy at the store. When it says that your flour has been bleached and enriched, that's not a good thing. Bleach. Bleach is a poison. You don't want to eat poison. And I'm sure there is, uh, you know, uh, uh, there's an acceptable amount that you can take <laughs> where it doesn't kill you. But I don't want to eat an acceptable amount of poison, do you? Something to consider. At any rate, you can take your flour and put it into practically any of your recipes. You just need to, your cake and pastry flour, uh, which is your soft white, is great for cookies, cakes, and pie crust, things like that. And your hard and soft wheat flour is good for breads and anything made with yeast and um, it's all so much healthier and if you can't handle taking it completely whole grain you can sift out a little bit of the wheat uh, germ and bran and still get a lot of the nutrients so they make different kinds of things and I'll show that in my video where I go to um, make the flour with my um, mock mill, which is the name of my wheat grinder. So I hope this has been exciting. I know we didn't make anything today, but we actually did. We, we made a life change. 
and this is going to help me stay healthy and I hope that if you choose to go this route it will help you and your family be even healthier and we'll go on this journey and I want to give a big hats off and credit to so many other people on YouTube who have talked about whole grains and wheat berries and and assorted basically um, you know whole food type things but among those again um, Mary at Mary's Nest um, on YouTube she is just wonderful and she has a lot of videos about this too so if you get bored waiting on my videos you can go over and check out some of hers no competition uh, again hats off and I bow to her she is excellent well if you like this video for changing your ways getting into whole grains being healthier and living better give it a thumbs up subscribe and share with your friends who like to cook or just want to learn how drop me a line in the comments below about your experience with this or what you think and what else you might like to see in in the kitchen or, or with this click the bell in the top right hand corner for notif ooh, <laughs> top right hand corner for notifications i'm jim hightower and remember everyone needs help even me be well. Red, white, and blue. We're going to be talking about something that... Uh, XX. I've forgotten what I was going to say. <laughs> Welcome to... <laughs>